You're listening to Cheers Podcast, brought to you by Mayday Brewery, Murfreesboro's own locally brewed beer. Stop by and see our friends at Mayday Brewery at 521 Old Salem Road in Murfreesboro. Also sold locally at select venues in Middle Tennessee. Today's guest is Rasan Robinson, founder of Nova Talent Agency. This is Cheers Podcast. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome on. Oh, yeah. All right, man. So how is uh, everything going with Nova? Man, it's been it's been amazing. Uh, it's definitely been a blessing, uh, but we've been busy, that's for sure. But it's a good busy. You know, it's yeah. not like the, you know, slam with homework type busy. Like, I'm slammed with something I'm actually <laughs> love doing. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, dude. So, no, mm-hmm. I understand that. Um, I want to ask you this, and I don't know how many times you got in this question, but where, where does Nova come from? Okay, so it's actually funny. Um, me and Kyle, uh, ironically enough, are one of the um, DJs that's on board. He goes by Kayla, but I'm calling him Kyle just because, yeah. you know, I know him. <laughs> yeah. We were actually, honestly, when we were in the works of this, we were just thinking about a name. And um, the original plan with Nova was obviously going to be different genres of music. So you've mm-hmm. got singer-songwriters, you've got DJs, yeah. hip-hop artists, you know, the whole nine. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And um, I remember Kyle was just like, you know, honestly, we would be considered just an explosion, uh, an explosion of just different, you know, genres or whatever. Yeah. Finally, we both just, we just came up with Nova, you know, because like a supernova. You, yeah, like a supernova. Yeah, okay. You know, when you think of like a Nova explosion, you've uh-huh. got different colors and auras mm-hmm. going around. If you think of it musically, Nova is, like I said, you know, just an explosion of different genres yeah. and great music and great just vibes going around, you know? Right, right. Mm-hmm. And I actually really like that about Nova. I've noticed it like because every time you put up these pictures on your on your uh, website, I'm like, dang, he's got them too, like mm-hmm. all these different genres. And I think that's really yeah. cool about Nova. And so I'm going to jump into one of the first questions that I had for you yeah. when I got to thinking about, you know, what all is he into, uh, Nova, all those different things. So coming out of Atlanta, yeah. how much does that Atlanta influence growing up around that area help you and benefit you in this process of, of choosing names? Who's going to be next? How yeah. much how much does that your grassroots help you? Well, it's funny because, uh, you know, yeah, I, I was pretty much uh, brought up in Atlanta, but I was born in L.A. So I've got, mm. yes, yeah, so I was born in Los Double. Angeles, lived, you know, had a lot of experiences in Manhattan, yeah. uh, New York, and moved out to Atlanta, you know, spent a lot of high school there. And I'll tell you, just, just looking at just everything that's going on, especially mm-hmm. in Atlanta, dude, Atlanta has been booming for yeah. real with just music entertainment whatever um they're honestly calling atlanta the new hollywood at this point yeah which is hilarious you they know do a lot yeah, of film you, there right yeah a lot of yeah. film a lot of music you know they're, they're just they're just doing their thing mm-hmm. out there so when you look in atlanta you look at like the lavish lifestyle you look right. at everything that's going on and how to really attain it and if anything i, I gotta give credit to just being from atlanta just you mm-hmm. know um, looking at really just looking at how they just did everything, you know, and uh, living that life, you know, being around it so many times, uh, it, it just inspires me the yeah. whole time, you know. So, yeah. and then you've got Nashville, which you know obviously isn't a gumshoe itself. Like Nashville right. is an incredible city. Um, so you look at all these different uh, cities and environments that I've been in, and it's honestly one big clash. I think the only city that I haven't been in that's like entertainment driven is like Chicago or yeah. or Dallas or Houston. You know what I mean? Yeah. But otherwise, man, you know. Atlanta, Los Angeles, New York, um, just being around those, and then now Nashville, being around those areas, it's it's been such a blessing. But definitely taking a lot out of all that, you know? yeah, so. yeah. That's a, that's a unique background. I didn't know you're from California. Oh yeah. So that's oh, like yeah. that's like all like music hubs. So that's yeah, really cool, and especially exactly. now that you're right here in Murfreesboro, outside of Nashville. So that really helps out, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, especially like now that I know about the LA thing, so you know like all these different music scenes. Yeah. So I've heard a lot of people talk about this. I don't know if you ever thought about this, but like hip hop right now yeah. is kind of like the rock and roll, like back in the '70s, with it being like so different. But so so many people like it, especially like the yeah. younger generation. Mm-hmm. What do you think is next, or do you think hip hop is going to be big for a long time, or do you think anything is going to be next? Um, I think when it comes to hip hop, and it's so funny because uh, you look at hip hop back when it started with the Sugar Hill Gang back in like you know seventy nine, the eighties, and yeah. then you look at hip hop now, it is such a change. Uh, I definitely encourage everyone. If you guys, when you guys get done tonight, go look up a video. It's like hip hop then and now, mm-hmm. and it's literally probably the most famous songs. And they do like a compilation, pretty yes. much like, pretty much like you know, like you ever go to a party and you hear a DJ switch mm-hmm. into another song so smoothly. Yeah. They do this, but with old school hip hop going into now. It's literally like you've got KRS One and MC Shan going into like old school Jay Z going into like yeah. Little Yachty, and it's like it's so wild when you think about the um, just the evolution of it. Yeah. Um, a lot of people dislike hip hop now because you know you've got old heads, you know, doing whatever. Um, yeah. You know, like I said, you've got the old heads that like love Jay Z, Nas, you know, um, Ice Cube back in the day, you know, the NWA right. click, all that. And then you listen to the hip hop now, and you got like, oh wow, you know, whatever. But people forget hip hop was founded as an individualistic type genre. You know, it's a rebellious genre. You know, yeah. you've got um, 
you know, the, and, and no disrespect to any of these other genres, but you've got like the, the cleanness of like jazz and classical music and, and even rock too. Um, rock is also an independent type thing. Like people are rebelling against whoever. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's how hip hop started. You know, hip hop yeah. started in the five cities in New York. It was like Manhattan, Queens, the Bronx, Harlem, and I guess me, I'm forgetting the fifth one. Uh, wow. Um, what did I say? Queens, Harlem, Manhattan, the Bronx. Uh wow, what is the fifth one? It'll come back. It'll come back to me in a little bit. Yeah. But you had the five boroughs in New York where um that's where hip hop started, and um literally you've got all these different scenes where um or all these different like boroughs in New York where it's literally such an individualism towards everybody. Like you know mm-hmm. you had the graffiti paint, the break dancing, all that stuff. So that's pretty much where hip hop was bred from. So if, if anyone is doubting or, or knocking the new age hip hop. They need to do some history because that's literally where that that's what older people back in the eighties were saying about the younger people doing hip hop now. Everybody was rocking, you know, the track suits, the Adidas sweatpants, right. you know, Run DMC, all that, yeah. the bucket hats, like yeah. all that. Like literally that's like people say that's the classic way to look, but you look back then, that's not how people dressed unless you were involved in that area, you know? Yeah. So you look now, you've got, you know, little Yachty with the with the red twist, the dreads yes. going on and whatnot. Yes. And, and and Uzi every time he uh changes his hairstyle up. That's individualism. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? That's where hip that's hip hop as a whole. So I, I love it. And I think hip hop's definitely gonna be around for a long time just because I mean, they were saying back in the nineties that it was a, it was or the eighties rather, mm-hmm. that it was just a facade, that it was gonna be a, a fad. But uh Lord behold, what, forty years later? Yeah. Yeah, forty years later, still wow. still cooking yeah. with gas, man. For yeah. sure. No, that's a good point. I and I mm-hmm. haven't heard it described like that, but it is really like individualistic. And I think yeah. it gives um people like really good opportunities to express themselves through music yeah. and um What's really cool is like that point that you made about individualism and different things like that is not like the mediums people have to pursue that. Yeah. And one thing that I did getting ready for like this interview with you, uh, you know, talking about hip hop and all that is I actually spent a lot of time on SoundCloud. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you feel about SoundCloud, but you know, they have the the term SoundCloud rapper yeah. nowadays. Uh, yeah. 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 I don't know. Is that like derogatory? Um, sort of. It can be only because yeah. it, in my opinion, new age people saying SoundCloud, listen to my yeah. SoundCloud link. Is literally the same as back then saying, "Please listen to my demo or listen to my mixtape." Mix you know? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Remember yeah. that the mixtape, yeah. all that. Um, that was back then. You know, back in yeah. the '80s, um, they had demos. You know, the cassette tapes and whatnot. Right, right. Um, they had the demos going, and mm-hmm. then maybe flash back to 10, 20 years down the line, you got singles, you got CDs, like, and and you know, um, a piece of me is like, you know, whatever about SoundCloud because I personally don't use it. Yeah. However, I mean, you you can't really knock them because personally, uh, one of uh, one of the artists that I'm trying to get on, a guy named Beige Cameron. Yeah. I found him through SoundCloud. You know, yeah. I mean, he has a SoundCloud link on there, and I was like, dude, this is this is tight. You know, what okay. I mean, this is yeah. A great, so it worked. Yeah. Great artist. So I mean, yeah. you know, you've got different. The majority of people on SoundCloud that rap, you know, mm-hmm. they. You know, they, they're just probably pe- kids who are bored, you know, in their basement that can put some on the internet and hopefully get some shine. You so know that's what a mean? stereotype. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But then okay. you've got, you got actual people that are out here that are, that are legitimately grinding, that are trying yeah. to, you know, do whatever. So when I hear the term SoundCloud rapper, yeah, it's funny, but at the same time, you know, these are all people that are, that are hitting the grindstone as much as all of us. We all got to start somewhere. You yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. And uh, didn't, and correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't, uh, what's his name? Red Red Beads. We were just talking about Yachty. him. Yachty. Yeah, Did Yachty. he get started on SoundCloud? Um, I'm not sure. I thought he got started with um his mixtapes, which is kind okay. of the same thing because yeah. you've got live mixtapes and you've got right. uh, you know um different apps so you could put you know free mm-hmm. mixtapes on there. And I have one of them on my phone. I can't even. I don't know why I'm like drawing a blank as to what it was called. But yeah, you got live mixtapes. You got yeah. that Piff, whatever. I think Yachty started out with uh, mixtapes to begin with. Yeah. So uh, yeah. But yeah, you know, he could have started out on SoundCloud too. You know, like I said, everybody's got to start somewhere. You know. Yeah. So. If anything, I think Yachty really got his big, like, exposure from, I think it was, a, I think somebody made an Instagram video of one of his songs and made a joke that, out of yeah, it. Yeah, is that right? The One Night, do you remember the song One Night? Yeah, that was, it's a huge song, yeah. Want, that song, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, that, that yeah that's stupid so- song, but literally, <laughs> no, I, I lo- I'm yeah. kidding, I love that song, that yeah. song's awesome. But that's how he got started, because yeah. literally, someone took it, made a funny YouTube Instagram video about it, and yeah. lore behold, he's worth, like, millions and millions of dollars now yes. you know what yeah, I mean? he's i mean he's super known in, in the hip-hop it's funny now. how life works yeah you know? yeah little boat mm-hmm. little yachty <laughs> little boat. Yeah. Yeah, little, little boat. Hey, yeah. shout out to him though man you know he, he went to tucker we used to play him in football uh mcintosh high school we played his high really? school football yeah i never personally saw him you know he's probably just doing his thing you know whatever right but um no shout out to him man he's been grinding 
All right, so yeah, you mentioned Little Yachty, and that reminded me of his song One Night, and then you know, sort of like Post Malone's White Iverson. So my question is, is when it comes to you know singles and how Migos just put out their album Culture, uh, Culture Two, yeah. Culture Two, and um, and so does a band really need an album anymore, or or is it a single that really takes you off, and you know, do you even need to present an album anymore? I think, in my opinion, because I've always been finicky about uh yeah my bad i've always been finicky about you know singles because you know singles are cool when you when you use them right you know what i mean mm-hmm. because i've heard of artists that put out maybe like five to six singles and they're performing them they'll go on a whole tour then they'll release their album and it's like four new songs otherwise everything else is singles you know what i mean yeah yeah um in my opinion and people really don't you know cherish or rather you know when a, when an album when an album comes out and mm-hmm. and the 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 one album I can really relate this to um as a kid listening to it is uh Outkast right they yes. came out with the, the love the love below right yeah um the love below because I remember Outkast did this series where it was like uh, Big Boy and Andre 3000 they did two separate albums but it was one entity you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. you had Big Boy who did was a speaker box with a bunch of X's on it yeah speaker yeah. box and then um that's like Love the way you move. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Ghetto music was on it, all that. And then you had Andre 3000's version, which was uh, the Love Below, which had Hey Ya, Roses, you know, all those songs. Yes. And I think he only released Hey Ya and Roses as singles, or made rather music videos to him. But he had like another 15 songs that were on the album that were like, wow, like this is insane. Yeah. But like I said, you know, people just don't cherish albums like that anymore because it's like, you know. If I could just listen to the single, why would I listen to it? But that's the thing, though. You gotta, you know, you just you just really have to be a fan of who that is. Yeah. Um. For instance, like Bruno Mars. You know, you had um his uh twenty four karat magic right. album or whatever. Right. Um. What was that album called, by the way? I forgot. Uh. I'm not actually sure. Something like that. I just I just know that that's a pretty darn good album. Like, yeah. I love it, and that's horrible that I remember. I don't remember the name of it. But anyway, <laughs> um, you had that album with the twenty four k magic and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, he released maybe a good. Yeah, 24K Magic, you had, I think it released Chunky as a single, and you had one other single on there as well, but then he had like another seven songs that were still on there. If you're smart about how you release your singles, yeah, singles are are important Mm because you want to keep them engaged, you want to keep them whatever, but also, you know, don't release all your singles because you might as well release your whole album, Right. Who I love the best that does this is Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar is great at this. He's the best. He made, he had one single that came out that didn't make any of the albums. You know what I'm saying? He just released something. Yeah. And then uh, The Heart Part 4, he released that mm-hmm. as a single. And I remember, I'm looking for it on his uh, latest album, Damn. And I'm like, yeah. dude, where's where's The Heart? But that's what Kendrick does. You know what I mean? He'll release all these songs, all these singles, but they never make the final album. Hardly, you know? Right. Um, Which is good, though, you know, because that keeps people on their feet. I think the only single that he released during that year that actually made on the album was Humble. You know, which everybody knows. What Humble. a good song. Yeah, what a great song. Oh, my goodness. Gosh, but, yeah. But, yeah, you know, he released Humble as a single. But, like, you know, the Heart Part 4 and, like, one other song that he released, they all didn't make the album, which is good because it kept people engaged, kept people wanting more. Mm-hmm. But then when he released the album, it was something we didn't expect. You know what I mean? Right. So I think, like, when it comes to dropping singles and, you know, doing whatever, uh, as long as you're smart with it, it's still a smart, you know, business, you know, strategy, you know? Yeah. Um, just to keep people engaged, but you gotta be smart with it. You know? Yeah, so. no, and, and I agree with that. And and I, tell me if you feel the same way about this, but I kind of feel like um, the idea of a single, like releasing that early, is to kind of build momentum for your album. Yeah. But I always feel like some people are, are now putting out singles because that is the song that they have. Yeah. And then like their singles, they have like a few singles, and then then they make an album to get those singles out. Yeah. So instead of like using their singles as like a teaser, that's just all they have nowadays is, mm-hmm. is singles. Exactly. And I know that's not totally true. But at the same time, I kind of feel like people are using singles for like a different reason now. It's like they throw their singles into an album, mm-hmm. whereas like back in the day, I feel like you had your album and then you would release a single in order to build that up. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. Do you think that people are doing that or is that just kind of how it feels? No, or? I think I agree. I think people are doing that yeah. um, just because, you know, sometimes people just only have one song. You know what I mean? Right, and right. sometimes people only have like so many few songs uh, because, you know, when, when somebody's so new, they don't know if they're going to make it or not. And of course, you know. Um, and, and this goes and this goes towards the labels as well. This go, this is definitely a big uh, label entity when it comes to releasing what songs get released and what songs don't. And I actually didn't learn this myself until maybe a couple of years ago because I, right. I was always wondering like you know if I, if you're a hip hop artist or you're an R and B artist whatever and you release music or, or you know you're that's your career all you do is make music 
what's always taking people so long to release it? But turns out right. there's so many different things business wise that go into when to release an album, mm -hmm. what songs to put out, this and that, and, and that sucks because you know if, if that were the case, man, you know, everybody would be releasing everything, you know, because obviously, if I am who I am as an artist, and you know I've made my millions of dollars and I'm doing my thing, nobody could tell me nothing about my music. You know what I mean? I'm I'm thinking everything I put out is is a smash hit, you know? Right. But obviously, when it comes to the label putting it out, because obviously I could put out. Um, album number one by Rasan Robinson. Obviously, the label's gonna have their stamp on it, you know, whatever production wise, whatever. So they really have the final say so as to what gets put out and what doesn't. That's why in hip hop, there's a lot of mixtapes because you know, obviously, you've got guys like uh, J Cole, for instance. He's the biggest example in my opinion. J Cole will release album after album after album, whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. But after his album that made him pretty much famous like he is now yeah. he still was making mixtapes why because those mixtape songs were the songs that you know when he when he was signed to rock nation during the time rock nation wasn't even putting them out you know what i mean for, for reasons unknown you know to this day that that's yeah. between them and rock nation you know i'm not gonna you know breach that contract but <laughs> they you know they only put out s certain songs for whatever reason that's where the whole mixtape thing comes in and that's where the single thing comes in because sometimes, you know, you've got different artists out here who want to put everything out, but they just can't. You know, it's just that's just how the label functions, you know? Right. So, mm -hmm. Well, that, that's kind of a cool thing about, we were talking about this earlier, SoundCloud. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, what is it, Chance the Rapper doesn't have a label, right? Chance, I don't think, has he, he hasn't put an album out, has he? If one more label tries to stop. Yeah, uh, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, he, he has not put a single album out. Yeah. That, is, that is incredible. So wait, me, he hasn't know? put an album out? No, they're I all, all mixtapes. I mean, he's is that on, right? yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's on Spotify and he's on whatever, but but in reality, all these albums are, or not albums rather, all these, you know, compilations of music are yeah. all mixtapes. Yeah. Every single one. Well, that's kind of interesting because, I mean, that kind of like re answers my question. Like, do you even need an album? Because, like, Chance yeah. the Rapper is huge. He's got his own uh, hat now, right? And, yeah, like, so his, his own, yeah. like, apparel. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so I mean, he's doing great. Like, he's doing everything you'd want to do, label or not. Yeah. So, like, do you really, you know, need a label? Yeah. yeah that's super exactly. in That's super interesting. Or at least if you can figure it out, I'm sure that wasn't easy to, you to, know, to start that without one. Yeah. So, not at all. You yeah. know, and, and it's such a shame because the label originally was created to help speed up the process of the artist you know what yeah. i'm saying like anybody can grab the mic and do what they got to do on it and make amazing music right but there's such a black and white business when it comes to the music business on its own that's why there's so many characters when it comes to it um i think in my opinion with with nova um when you look at the back staff because forget the artists you know what i'm saying we have maybe like eight artists on board but let's not even act like they're there We've got myself, who's the head. You've got, you know, a buddy of mine who's pretty much my number two. We've got maybe, we got one videographer on board, and we're getting more. We've got three photographers on board. We've got, you know, we've got um, pretty much somebody running our social media, somebody pretty much sending out emails to different singer-songwriters, whatever. Yeah. That's like a good seven to eight people right there, just working in the back office. Yeah. Now, imagine a major label like Def Jam or Rock Nation or, or, or whoever, you know how many people are getting paid and put in to put this one artist out there? A lot. Whether you're a publicist, whether you're this, whether you're that, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's insane. Um, but it's crazy because there's so many shysty characters in the music business now. Yeah. Um, wait, no, not even now. Like, honestly, years ago, just, just from the creation of the music business to begin with, um, there are so many shysty people who are all in it for the money that, you know, forget that the love of music, it is what it is. Right. So, you know, you've got people out here that really just want to make as much money as they can. Every in the music industry, everything has a price. There's always a deal to be made. Not even just the music industry, in the entertainment business to begin with, just whatever. There's always a price on on something, you know? Which is crazy because, you know, music is music. You know what I mean? It doesn't cost me nothing to put my earbuds in and, and zone out, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But there's always there's always a deal to be made. There's always some money to be made, which is why chance in my opinion decided he didn't want to go that route of the label because he probably saw the evils of, you know, how a label works. And it's it's crazy because it's all, especially in the hip-hop industry, it really is all straight manipulation because you've got, take a street kid from, you know, let's say Detroit or something, right? Take a okay. kid that was out of Detroit, was running around in a project building or, you know, or, or 8 Mile, wherever, wherever he was doing, whatever. Yep. And... He has this capability to be an incredible artist. He has an amazing voice. He has great hip-hop lyricism, whatever. 
You give him $50,000, he doesn't know how to act. But he doesn't know that $50,000 comes with pretty much signing his name in blood. You mm -hmm. know, not literally, by the way, not literally. But, like, you know, you give him $50,000, he doesn't know what the heck to do with it. Because that's that's more money that he's seen. Like a label's giving him money. Yeah, the saying. label yeah, giving yeah. him money to pretty much, you know. It's a big commitment. Yeah, it, yeah. the commitment's huge. But, you know, they don't, you know, the artists don't know what they're being signed for. That's why the whole... What, what Chance did is so revolutionary because he saw the evils of what was going on in the label. And I'm not saying all labels are evil, but you have some shisty people out there and you have some people that feel like they haven't gotten paid for what they deserve. For instance, you've got um, you know P. Diddy out here, right? Right. Um, you ever heard of the group called The Lokes? The Locks? Lokes, I, I haven't. Yeah. I haven't. Um, it consisted of Jadakiss and Styles P. And okay. two great hip-hop artists. They got screwed over. They were signed to Bad Boy Records. They made all this money for P. Diddy. You know, Styles P. Jadakiss doing their thing. Jadakiss had his own EP. Styles P. had, you know, I get high, all that, whatever. <laughs> um, dude, he, they made so many, they made, they sold so many records. It made so much money. But the label was the only one that saw all of it, you know? Yeah. So that's why Jadakiss to this day literally has no love lost at all for P. Diddy. Neither does Styles P. Because, Literally, they made so much money that they only saw a fraction of it. Now, Chance the Rapper, you know, literally, it's him putting his own music out for himself. You know what I'm saying? Right. He's passing his own music out. He's on tour. doing it. There is no middleman. He's the man. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. why, you know, in my opinion, when it comes to, like, labels, I mean, you're still going to have a record company. You're still going to have a label. But people are so careful. And, and then Chance doesn't, and then Chance doesn't make it any easier for the labels either because, you know... He's showing people, like, you don't need somebody to tell you what to put out and when to put it out. Right. Chance put out all of his music on his own whenever he felt like it. He recorded who he wanted to record with, this, that, and a third. And and I may be and I may be dumbing it down because there are so many logistics other than the label that go into making music nowadays. Yeah. But, you know, you've got different, you know, entities going on with it. Um, Chance just said, man, screw the label. I'm doing what I want. You know what I mean? And, right, and, right. And that was the best case scenario because Chance is an incredible entertainer an incredible artist. He has amazing music. So why doesn't he put it out? All right, so I know we were talking a little bit about uh, labels and different things like that. Is Nova a label or is it a booking company or? We pretty much operate more as a booking company. But okay. we also, not only just a booking company, but we also work as well as like a grand host of putting different events on. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, I wouldn't say a label just because, you know, a lot of these artists that are doing their things, a lot of them only have SoundCloud, Spotify, whatever. Mm -hmm. So there really isn't much income coming into records being sold. You right. Because, I mean? you know, nobody buys records like that anymore. Right. It's, it's like an iTunes download. It's more or, of a digital type yeah. you know, stream going on. Or Spotify, whatever you get from having plays on Spotify. Exactly. Yeah. So the way that we operate, um, in my opinion, we put on different events. We go to different venues out in Murfreesboro. Uh, for instance, like Puckets on Monday right. nights. We have singer-songwriters coming out yeah. on Monday nights. Um, Nova was the middleman between that. Mm -hmm. So we go out and we, you know, hit up the singer songwriters like, hey, you know, would you like to perform Monday night at seven right. or eight, you know, whatever. And then on Puckett's side, you know, we provide the artists on the artist side, we provide them the venue. Mm -hmm. We're pretty much one big middleman when it comes to that. Yeah. So with the connections that a lot of us on Nova have, like for instance, for me, I'm a server at Puckett's. That's the only way I got yeah. that opportunity. You know what I mean? That's nice. So yeah, which is awesome. Yeah. So, you know. Um, the reason we were able to um, make that happen is because, like I said, I served there. Mm -hmm. I just saw that we have a big stage. We have a lot of people coming in on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday yep. nights. And people want to see music during the week. So, yes. you know, I decided to pick Monday night, um, you know, when everybody's, you know, getting back into classes and the yep. swing of things. We do, uh, you know, Puckett's uh, MTSU Music Mondays over there. Um, but yeah, name. that's, mm -hmm, yeah, isn't that, isn't that a great name? <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, that's pretty much what Nova does. We want to go out, find different, um, venues that would like to have more live music going on. Um, because we think in my opinion that live music can easily generate a more attractiveness to a, to a venue, you know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. Like, yeah. cause I, I heard somebody and, and, and don't get it twisted cause you got some people out here that don't need to be performing live, AKA a lot of people who do karaoke. But anyway, <laughs> um, Me. there's no such thing, <laughs> there's no such thing as bad live music. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. whether you're paying attention, whether you're clapping your hands, whether you're starting a conga line in the restaurant, whatever mm -hmm. you want to do, um, there's such a better element to having live music, you know? Yeah, especially so, yeah, mm -hmm. it's just entertainment. So we're just trying yeah. to implement that. You go, yeah. you go out to Nashville and you go like to downtown. 
guarantee you almost every bar downstairs especially all has live music oh if they on. don't then every they're in single, trouble yeah, they're in exactly. trouble on a saturday night that's what people want to see that's the norm on what is saturday it night tootsie's has three floors of it yeah one of those has like multiple floors of yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it's, it's great yeah and like every single one has live music going on different bands right you could have one band that's on the first floor doing its thing mm-hmm. go up to the second it's a totally different yes band. i love the third, that it's a yes. totally different band and they are packed out yes now, all the way through in murfreesboro we have mtsu we mm-hmm. literally are are like a mini nashville mm-hmm. in my opinion so why don't we have this going on because we have gyms yeah we <laughs> have gyms you know but and, and notice and i love gyms i love gyms trust me i know you but you gyms. know yeah gyms is awesome but like <laughs> shout out to gyms i've but never anyway, been like, to gyms without you being there yeah i'm always at gyms. <laughs> like, gyms is great gyms is great they, they treat me nice over there but they like you know the podcast yeah right but like you know um why don't we have that going on over here? You know, we have yeah. different venues, great venues, man, like Puckett's, The Goat, whatever. Yeah. Why don't we yeah, have the Yeah, why don't we have live music going on over there, you know? So that's that's our job, you know, to just convince people that live music is, you know, the way to go. Yeah. Man, you are in a unique oppor- like area right now with, with the Nova Talent, and I've asked you these questions and like clearly you understand like the falls um and labels and mm-hmm. the opportunities, you know, being a SoundCloud, different things like that. Yeah. I really think you you have the opportunity to have like a special medium where you could be a label without yeah. these these downfalls and these problems with labels. Yeah. And you understand what it takes to be um, an artist if you're going to be solo as well. Mm-hmm. So you, you can incorporate those things. So I, I feel like you're in a really like unique opportunity about Nova, and I think that's I think that's really cool that you understand both of those concepts mm-hmm. um, when it comes to that and, and, you know, what can be a problem and, and what can be fixed. So I would, I would love to see you make that a label one day if that's something you're interested in. But, but that's a cool point you made about entertainment in Murfreesboro. And I think Murfreesboro stands that have so much stuff in it, man. Oh, We're yeah. right between Chattanooga and Nashville. Oh, yeah. Whereas Chattanooga is kind of a different vibe. Mur- Murfreesboro and Nashville are, are, are a little more similar, but there's like a lot of room for entertainment here in the city. Oh, yeah. I, I Absolutely. Think, yeah. I think that's something that's definitely going to pop in. So I want to ask you this, especially with like, me mentioning and, and you saying like what you want to do is is get the market growing more and different things like this um i spent like two hours the other day on the on the internet and i'm not proud to say this but i just sit there and like researched who was going to be like the next name in hip-hop yeah. you know every year what is it xxl magazine uh, talks the about freshman, their, the yeah. freshman mm-hmm. the freshman so i was looking at that and i was looking at the different ones and i started to wonder you know what who's going to be next I was kind of thinking, do you have anybody in mind that you're seeing right now, and whether it be you know Murfreesboro, Nashville, uh, the nation, the world, the next hip hop name? Like, who do you see it's coming up um, outside of that XXL list, which is you know your your classic list? Yeah. Um, are you inferring to like anybody from Murfreesboro, or just anyone in general? Either or. You could talk about both. If you see somebody in, in Murfreesboro who you think is is going to be you know maybe the next big thing, then I'd love to hear that. And, and also in the nation, if you hear a you know somebody lower, hip hop wise. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna start in Murfreesboro because I just like I I, I can't not talk about these two. Right, here. we'll grow out from there. Um, the next big the two next big guys in my opinion that are coming out of Murfreesboro, and remember these names, y'all: Dave Simba, yes, Sage Cameron. <laughs> those two guys, oh, they're just. How do you so, find those guys online? Man, okay, so they will both be on SoundCloud. I know Dave has Spotify going on. Yeah, with Beige Cameron, he just has yeah. a SoundCloud. Um, Dave is also on Spotify, iTunes, um, just past look issues. His name up. Yeah, past issues. Dave yeah. Simba, I got it yeah. saved. Let me tell you, man. <laughs> uh, I'll, st- I'll start with uh, Dave, and I'll go into beige first. Uh, Dave, man, we had a Friday night showcase uh, this past Friday. Yep. Um, huge success, by the way. And I remember, I am just watching everybody operate. You know, you had Anthony Panolina go first. He was playing a saxophone, doing his thing. I love that. Yeah, it yes. was awesome. Yes. And then um, next was Dave. And I remember from there, that's when the majority crowd had gotten in there. Yeah. So Dave, I remember, was up there, and he was performing Wavy, which just dropped, by the way, on iTunes, all that. Ugh, excuse me. And I remember, dude, the way he just worked the crowd like that and got everybody to sing along to Wavy, like – He's doing his thing. He's like, cause I'm wavy. All of a sudden you hear, I'm wavy. I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, people were into it, And literally, I I didn't expect that. I really didn't because, you know, yeah, people love to support other people. But, you know, the fact that everyone knew the lyrics to his song, that's huge. And two two big things that come to me to be a successful hip-hop artist, in my opinion. You have to have, obviously, the lyricism, but crowd presence is huge. And let me tell you, let me tell you, um, two artists that, that come to mind when it comes to crowd presence, uh, Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole. Have y'all ever seen those viral videos of when Kendrick is performing Humble, and as soon as that, uh, my left stroke just went viral, like that, mm-hmm. that break in the song, mm-hmm. they don't play the beat anymore. The crowd raps the entire song back yeah. to him. Kendrick is literally standing there, like, and all you hear is a crowd <laughs> like, 
Rice Joe Pillow Baby. Like they're singing it right back. <laughs> That's they sing awesome. All the way up to the hook. They sing the entire verse. And I'm like, dude, like you know you made it when you had an entire crowd singing it. J. Cole too. Remember the song on No Role Models? Like yeah. the whole hook, like talking about Don't Save Her. She don't want to be sad. Yes. Like the whole crowd is just is yelling that back. And J. Cole's literally, I remember there was one video, J. Cole's literally sitting, like crisscross Cross Applesauce, mm-hmm. just, just sitting there, just listening to the whole crowd, mm-hmm. just listen to it. And I'm like, that is hilarious. <laughs> that's you know? great. Yeah, if you can write something that people enjoy that yeah. much. And that's a good sign if, if yeah. Dave's getting people to do that. Now Dave's doing that, and then you've got uh and then you got Beige Cameron, who yeah. I just listened to him. That man is probably the most conscious minded re- MCs that I've heard in a minute, but he doesn't use that to a disadvantage because in my opinion, you've got a lot of people out here who listen to hip hop music that don't like a lot of rappers that are too smart for their own good. Yeah. Beige is a very intelligent person. However, he knows exactly how to say it, when to say it, mm-hmm. and he knows how to flip it to make it like a hot song. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. Um, Cause anyone can hop on and rap about, you know, Aristotle or whatever, but mm-hmm. who's gonna who's gonna vibe to that? You know, right? No, yeah. that's that's a good point. Because isn't mm-hmm. it what is it the story about? I don't even know if this is true, but I always hear how Two Chains was like this like super high GPA yeah. in college and whatnot. And, mm-hmm. and his lyrics, and I'm I'm not faulting him on this, but his lyrics are like you know club banger lyrics, yeah, stuff like club that. banger. Uh-huh. You can tell he's smart because like he's not just saying things he, that he's articulating things that people like to hear. He knows exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. like a good medium between like a kid Cuddy who has like really like deep lyrics you have deep to think lyrics. about sometimes, mm-hmm. and and versus like you know just like like club banger stuff. That's in so, my opinion the whole reason like why that. there there's a rapper back in the 90s named Cannabis who mm-hmm. and I think about this every time I talk to people about different MCs who are so smart and so intelligent but they literally shoot themselves in the foot doing it. Go listen to a Cannabis song. That dude will literally have your brain like throbbing. <laughs> he is literally probably one of the one of the smartest MCs I think I've ever heard. Yeah. But everybody was like what in the heck are you talking about? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> just figure it out. Like, you know, just 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 him performing with like Jedi mind tricks and all that. And I'm yeah. sitting here like, you know, and this is great music, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I I love cannabis. Like he, I still listen to cannabis. However, dude, he is so friggin' smart for his own good. Right. And he shot himself in the foot doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the thing that I like about Beige, which reminds me a lot of a J Cole of yeah. of our era. Um what am I saying of our era? Like J. Cole did yeah. retire. You know what I mean? Like, you know, a, a beige right. of no, like, he's a J. Cole of our age, pretty much. Yeah. Um, beige is so incredibly smart just by talking to him. I remember the first time I talked to him was uh was Saturday night. Yeah, Saturday night, um, went to his house, you know, we chopped it up, you know, I wanted to meet him for a long time. And uh he finally, you know, I finally got the opportunity to talk to him. Mm-hmm. And he just was so just incredibly just intelligent, you know? And the more that I was talking to him, the more that I understood. He's smart, but he's so smart, he knows when to say certain things in a song that isn't going to lose his audience, you know? Mm-hmm. That's why I think Dave and Beige, in my opinion, those dudes, and, and, and this is definitely going to be on us to make sure that they get the exposure that they need. Um, those guys are going to be huge, for real. Dave already has a great following, I think. Yeah. Beige also has a good following, but we can take it just to the next level with these two. Um, like for instance, I know, uh, Beige, uh, he, you know, he got the chance to perform on a uh, what's up Rachel, yeah. um, you know, their live recording and all that. And then, you know, that, that's just, that, that's exactly what Nova's for. Mm-hmm. You know, Beige has this incredible, you know, talent of being an MC and he has a SoundCloud, SoundCloud link, but Perfect. what was he doing with it? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like he wasn't, you know, he told me he hadn't performed in a hot minute just cause he just hasn't, you know, got that extra mm, to just get him up there. That's what Nova's yeah. doing pretty much. Just give him that extra that extra push to just get him, you know, yeah. to get him on stage and just, you know, to perform, rock the crowd, you know, that's what he's good at. Right, you know? right. Have you seen him perform live? I haven't yet, and I want, yeah. and I want to so bad, but I'll, I'll get the chance. I'll get the chance. Um, I'm sure. I'm not worried about him how he how he is with with the crowd because just just listening to his, his lyrics, there's no way you couldn't be engaged in the crowd. You know what I'm saying? There's mm-hmm. no way unless you're really not paying attention, which <laughs> yeah. is like, dude, right. why, why are you at a concert if you're not? Even, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, but uh, no, I'm not worried about. I'm not worried about beige now. Dave, though, I've heard, I've seen Dave yeah. live, and he is just wow. You know what I mean? Like right. that, that dude, right. that dude's crowd presence is just, just insane. You know, like he's just, just, just wow. You know, like just. And that's kind of who mm-hmm. he is. I mean, I know Dave, and that's just kind of who he is, man. Who doesn't know Dave at this point? To be honest, like Dave is just. If you don't go at, check him out, yeah, Dave, Dave yeah. Simba. I, Dave I don't know Simba. what his handle is. It's probably like at Dave. At Simba. Dave Simba, yeah. At, yeah, Dave Simba. I'm yeah, sure nobody Simba else has that last name. No. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> yeah, no, he uh he's he's really interesting. So other than, you know, local Murphy's Bros or anybody that you see in rap in general, I mean, obviously I like to see those two guys in like, you mm-hmm. know, XXL magazine. 
Um, but who do you think might be like the next big name that maybe we should be looking out for that we might hear on the radio or you know the, the next big wave? Like what is it? Block Boy J is that his Black name? Boy you know, Jay, yeah. shoot, look alive. Yeah, like, yeah he's yeah, kind of like he's he's, it's happening for him right now. So um, even though he's kind of been around for the past like year and some change, Black Youngster, he's definitely doing some good things. Yeah. You know, he's just. I mean, he he's like he's like a typical club banger rapper, okay. but he know he knows what he's good at. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If there's anything I respect about people in hip hop, if you know that you're good at rapping about what you're rapping about, mm-hmm. and you're not trying to be somebody else, do your thing by all means. You know, whatever. Um, Black Youngster, I love him. He's just, he just he's just funny. Like that, yeah. that dude is. He's just a great just artists to just listen to you any know? any like particular song that i might have heard or um you probably heard what's the name of that song okay bear with me it's called booty straight up okay it's called booty i like the creativity <laughs> straight up straight up <laughs> just called booty and like okay but that's probably his banger right now like everybody loves that song every okay. every party every club i go to like just listening to music whatever yeah that song comes on at least twice <laughs> straight up like okay so speaking mm-hmm. of like every party every club you go to um Obviously, you've heard of this, you know, shoot song, Black mm-hmm. Boy J, Look Alive, got on with Memphis and, oh my gosh, and, and with yeah. Drake, and so, so I mean, things are going really well for him. So, do you? Do, I, I feel like dances to songs are like devolving over time. Like I love that, <laughs> but like, what happened to like, you know, songs where it was like multiple things you had to do for a dance, like and the, now like it's the it's Cupid literally shuffle. Like yeah, song, yeah. yeah, I hate to refer to the Cupid yeah, shuffle, Cupid comparing shuffle. it to the sh- sh- shoot. shoot dance, you call yeah. it shoot? Is it called shoot? It's Shooting? called shoot. Like like you shoot a gun, like shoot. So you do call that shooting? Uh, or is it, I am going to shoot tonight? Dude, honestly, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm like, you could sure be like... How they, how they refer to it, yeah. That's funny. You um, know, like, let's do the cha-cha slide. Do you like, cha-cha let's, slide, Let's yeah. do the shoot. Yeah, like. let's do the shoot dance. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think they call it, let's do the shoot dance. That's what I, that's let's what I hear Let's do the shoot yeah. dance. Mm-hmm, the shoot dance, yeah. <laughs> That, yeah. Listen, bro. That that's such a that's such a funny dance to me. Like, just yeah. shoot, shoot. Like, the, that is just... the first person I ever saw do that was Dave Simba. Dave was the first yeah. one. Yeah, yeah we were playing exactly. soccer. He was refing, and mm-hmm. somebody brought it up, and I was like, "Oh, that looks kind of cool." Yeah, probably because probably Dave did it correctly. Um, if I was doing it, people probably wouldn't have caught on to it. <laughs> <laughs> so, nah, so, dude. I tell you, you either look you either look funny doing it, mm-hmm. or you you actually look like you know what you're doing. There's such a thin line doing that dance. Like it, it's it's hilarious seeing people. Uh, Try to do that dance. Personally, I, I think I sort of got it down. Not not as down as Dave does. Dave just I don't know like, what's up with that man. <laughs> what was it? Um, uh, hit the Quan was like a whole series of things. Hit the you know, Quan, yeah, you'd like I buy like that. an Amazon yeah. like how to to figure that one out, and yeah, now like there's the, the shoot. Dance. So like, what what do you think the best one ever is? Probably best one ever in my opinion. You can say the cha cha slide. Ooh, because it's been done a lot. Oh, Think man. about it. Every cruise ship in the ocean is doing every that at least twice. Ship, every cruise ship <laughs> at least doing it twice. <laughs> at least twice. Um, <laughs> I the best one ever. I gotta give it to. Oh my gosh, what is the name of that dance? What's the song? The um, have y'all ever heard of the song "The Biker Shuffle"? Have y'all heard of that? The Biker Shuffle. Now kick with it, kick with it. All that song, I, like, I, dude. I, yeah, I think so. Listen, yeah. Go listen to a song called "The Biker Shuffle." Cannot tell you who <laughs> rapped that song, but this song, like, is just so mad catchy. Like. <laughs> It is. It is so. Oh wow! I think the first time I ever heard that was at a uh, Cahoots in uh, Lebanon, and Cahoots I was like, in yeah, Lebanon. Cahoots in Lebanon. I remember, and this is like one of those, uh, one of those uh, square dances, swing dancing yeah. bar. So you know, I did not expect to hear that song. Yeah. When I heard it, everyone that I could think of, black, white, Puerto Rican, whatever, everybody was <laughs> out there doing that dance, and I'm like, this is a pretty darn good song, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, but the best one ever, I think, in my opinion, only because I, I just had to mention the biker shuffle. Yeah. The best one I think that I've ever heard was definitely the Cupid Shuffle. I, I, love, okay. I love the Cupid Shuffle. I mean, Shuffle. that one's like, been popular for years. Years. Like, you know, I might be wrong, but I don't think we'll be doing the Quan in like 2050, but probably nah, we'll still be doing the nah. Cupid Shuffle. <laughs> nope. <laughs> part 10. Oh, yeah. Cupid Shuffle Part 10. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. man That man has royalties for days. He's Who still is probably. It? Uh, I think his name's Cupid. His name's Cupid. So it's his shuffle. It's his shuffle. He I bet he feels it. really special. Yeah, right? Yeah. Cupid. Um, you think people see him out in public and ask him to do it with him and he's just like really tired of it? You know what's funny? I couldn't tell you what Cupid looked like if if you if you wanted me to. Is there any really way we don't. could get uh, the guy who made that song pulled up on one of these screens? Yeah. I would really like to see who did that. Cupid. Yeah. <laughs> Cupid, man. He's got one other song that was trying to be like another Cupid shuffle. But yeah. Impossible. Never. It you can can't never replicate be as big that. as the Cupid shuffle. Yeah. I couldn't even name five Cupid, Cupid songs if I wanted to. Does I'm he even have more struggling. Songs? Yeah, he, he does. I'm even struggling <laughs> trying to say Cupid without saying Cupid Shuffle. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, straight up. Like, yeah, I can't yeah. believe he released more songs. I'd have been like, "Well, I did it." Oh yeah, he's got like maybe a good five more songs. Not not five more, but like 
like I said, I just couldn't name five. He's got a lot more songs, yeah. though. Um, he's got the Cupid Shuffle and the Love Slide, all that. Is that what he looks like? Is that him? Yeah. <laughs> that man is... Wow, he, he looks kind of young. Yeah. <laughs> wow, nice photo. Got the world in his hands. <laughs> That's, That's the world in his hands. Yeah, right? Yeah. So this is the guy. Look, click on that top left picture. Let's see. So that's Cupid. That's, that's a, Cupid. Mm -hmm. There he is. That's the man himself. <laughs> that man. Nice. Listen, listen. While, while I'm hating on him, he's still making millions off a song he released Dude, like over 10 years ago. He's like, shuffling straight out the bank right now. <laughs> really, though. He's shuffling out the bank. And, yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, good for him, man. That, it's kind of like, uh, what's the K Korean guy who made the... Gangnam Style? Oh, what about Gangnam Style? Yeah, oh, yeah. Man. That dude, listen, if I could... You ever hear those songs that you're just thinking, holy crap, if I would have came up with those lyrics, I yeah. could be making millions right now? Oh, my gosh. But if dude, I would have known, like, the... But think Gangnam about this, dude. Style, Can you imagine like, you, like, sitting down with, like, a pen and paper and being like, hmm... What Gagnum song? style. Yeah. And writing that yes. down is like, this like, is going to be a hit. Like, yeah, there's right? no way. Yeah, that would have just never, it had to be him. You know? I know, right? It, it had to be him. It's so funny to think, like, some of the songs out here that yeah. uh, that originally were scrapped. Like, people were not digging them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, one of the songs that I think of that always, you know, throws me off about, like, you know, how people were saying, this is not going to be a hit, this and that. Right. This is the song that everyone was saying back when it came out. This song is stupid. It's not going to be a hit. This, that, and a third. But I know what you're going to say. In the club by 50 Cent. I wasn't going to guess that. What were you going to say? Lifestyle. Lifestyle? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I actually like that show. No, I, song. Yeah, I love no, that I, song. I like that song, too, yeah. man. But Yo, In the club by 50 That was 50? the first album I ever had. Really? Was that album uh, wow. with like the shattered cover Yeah. the 50 Cent. Yeah. First album I ever bought. I'm a big 50 Cent What was Cent it called fan. again? Bulletproof? Something like that? Yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah, Bulletproof. bulletproof. Uh -huh. yeah, I, yeah. I, just, I just like 50 Cent. They I like his flow. I like his beats. Like it, it felt really... When I was, you know, growing up in like a small town, I was like, yeah. "This is cool." Yeah, I remember that was the one album my mom had told me I can never listen to. Really? Because I was so young. Like, and <laughs> I think she had just went and got it. Um, because she's an entertainment attorney, so she had music sent to her left and right. So yeah. I think she had finally got it along with like a bunch of others, and um, Fifty finally released that album, so my mom got it, and I remember. Mm -hmm. Me as a kid, they were listening to it in the in the main living room, and she was like, "Nope, can't listen to this one," which made really? me even more intrigued to go look it up. Finally, I looked it up, and I listened to it. I'm like, "Yo, this album is fire!" You know what I <laughs> mean? Like, this is crazy. There we go. Yeah, yeah get yes, rich that, or die trying. That's what that's it's called. Right. Yeah, yeah. See, get that, rich or die trying. That's a cool album cover. People need to do more stuff like that. I agree. Like we used to hold it because like the plastic CD cases, you know? Yeah. So it, like looked like it was cracked. I thought, yeah, thought which it was is broken because cool, those cracked all the time. Yeah. Those I, cracked all the time. When I when I first like when I was a kid, you know, snooping around and sorry about this, mom, you didn't know about this. <laughs> when I was snooping around and I found that album and yeah. I was just like looking at it or whatever, I thought she had broke it. I'm sitting here right. like, why'd she break the thing? But then I would start like you know whatever, and I'm like. Wait a minute, is that the part of the... That's dope, you know what I mean? Like, that's all. crazy. Uh-huh, trick, trick, trick the soul. soul, dude. Yeah, 50 Cent is a uh, interesting character. I don't know what he's doing now. I he, wish he'd be like a feature on somebody's Well, he's song. got um, he's got a really popular uh, TV show on Stars going on right Does now. Does he? Power, yeah. What's it about? Um, it's about this... Um, Basically, it's just drugged. It's so much stuff going on, but the main I've synopsis... Yeah. Okay. The main synopsis is pretty much like this uh, drug dealer who... Is easily one of the best drug dealers in New York. Like he's yeah. this this Mexican guy's like main plug in New York doing his thing. He's got all these connections out in Queens, Manhattan, whatever. Perfect. And um, they like as a drug dealer. Don't ask me how I know so much about this. I'm not engaged <laughs> in that. But anyway, as a drug dealer, they would take their money and they'd purchase. They they'd have like flow going in. So they would buy like I don't know laundry mats, like this and that, uh -huh. um, to to make it seem like they don't have much money. They're than laundering they do. their yeah, money. Yeah, laundering. That's yeah. what it is. And do laundry. Yeah, doing laundry, laundering, <laughs> laundry, right? Laundering, laundry. But laundry. he went and bought a um, a nightclub out in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Turns out the nightclub ends up being a stellar success. I'm talking about, like, this is the hottest nightclub. You got yeah. people coming in. And so then the main character of Power decides he wants to be, yep, that's it. The main character of Power decides he wants to be the, like, legit businessman. He wants to get out of the drug scene. But his best friend, a guy named Tommy, is like, Dude, we're already rich. We're already made. Let's just keep yeah. going. But there's only two realities for a drug dealer. You either end up dead or you end up in, in jail. You know, that's that's always been yeah. the, the, the fact of the matter. Um, and there's other things going on. Like, you know, uh, the main character ends up seeing, like, his high school girlfriend or something like that. Like, out of that he fell in love with. The girl ended up leaving him. Mm -hmm. He also happens to be married with two children. So, it's obviously, you can't just go up to this woman. You know what I mean? And is it 50 Cent? Is he um, the main character? No, 50 isn't the main character. I think 50's, like, 
one of the anti heroes. Yeah, he's a side character, one of the anti heroes in it. That's cool. Um, but that's the main character right there. Like James St. Patrick, uh, call him Jamie. His drug dealer name is called Ghost, which gave me chills when I that's first heard cool it. That's a cool drug like, dealing name. Wow, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, he ends up meeting this, he ends up uh, finding his uh, high school sweetheart in, in, in the club that he runs. Mm-hmm. Um, turns out his high school sweetheart. His high school sweetheart is now a DEA agent oh. who is looking to bust him. So it's like all these twists and turns, and Time I'm like, out. holy crap. Does yeah. this feel a little bit of like Breaking Bad? A little, actually. Yeah, like it's it's a, it's a, it sounds <laughs> awesome. Like I want to watch it. Yeah, 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 but when yeah, you yeah. said like DEA agent, close yeah. to the family, it's kind of like in Breaking mm-hmm, Bad where he yeah. has like, what is it, like the step brother? It's like Something his... like, yeah, yeah, step brother's like, yeah. No, it's his wife's brother. Wife's so, brother, yeah. Half brother? Mm-hmm. Have it's his wife's brother, brother-in-law, brother-in-law, brother-in-law. Brother brother yeah, brother 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 mm-hmm. yeah, so it's like, I guess it's probably like a pretty typical plot though. If you're wanting to be like a drug dealer, for the most part, throw a yeah. wrench in it. That yeah. sounds awesome. But I dude, this that. this show is awesome. How many like, seasons? It's great. Uh, three or four. Yeah, they're they're going so on their fourth going. right now. Yeah, it's going. Yeah, so yeah, it's going. Okay. Yeah, the first season is pretty pretty slow developing. The second, third, and fourth season though, holy crap! It is going. Yeah, it is. It is insane, man. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I can appreciate that. I like Fifty Cent. So if it's anything, you know, like. It's like a movie version of Indie Club. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it's funny because Fifty actually was in a huge dispute with the creators of that show Empire because mm-hmm. they thought that Empire was like a knockoff version of Power. So Fifty's knocking Empire, this and that. But in reality, Empire is more about the music business side of things of this family trying to run it, whatever. It's it's a really mad dysfunctional show. Y'all gotta watch that. I don't even want to yeah. get into. It. I don't even want to get into all too. that. Yeah, Empire is such a. They have so many twists and turns going on. It's just like, oh my Jesus, you know what I mean? Right. But Empire's good. It's on Fox. Uh, it comes on I think like Monday nights at like eight or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. How do you know so many details about television shows all yeah, the way down know. to when they come out? I don't know. I watch a lot of TV. <laughs> Should we do some plugs for like some television yeah, right. shows? <laughs> yeah, right. Next Monday. <laughs> yeah, right. Next Monday. But no, nah, Empire's <laughs> a great show. Uh, Power is an amazing show though. Power's yeah. great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that's that's awesome. I, I guess I need to watch more TV. Yeah. This reminds me of Ballers. Like not in the same way, but like Ballers is like a guy yeah. running a company type thing. Mm-hmm. It's The Rock. Yeah. He's awesome. Yeah. Have you ever watched watched that? I haven't yet. I've wanted to. I've wanted to watch it. It's I just cool. haven't yet. You it's know? cool. The Rock yeah. is just like everything he does is. Good. He's great. Yeah. He's great. Mm-hmm. It's got a, it's got like some cameos from like, um, Steph Curry's on there. Steph Curry, like, yeah. Uh-huh. Like that. So it's Doing cool. I'm thing. I'm like a huge like in sports. So like when I watch that, and, like somebody like that shows up, I'm like, oh cool. You're like, oh yeah. dope, Steph. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Crazy. yeah. Like all kinds of different. That's how I am with music stuff. artists. If I ever see like some some music artists mm-hmm. like Empire, I remember they had Snoop on one time. Like he was like one of the crucial characters. Like he, what the heck? Like <laughs> he's just like he needs to be in more things. Yeah, I he's agree. in a lot and he's not in enough. Snoop is just a just a hybrid being like that dude is that dude's not human he's, he's just you know what i mean yeah. he's the man bro. i can always oh, appreciate snoop because it's like uh i feel like every time he's on something it's good yeah and you're always like oh it's it's snoop dog like there's such like a good connotation about snoop dog and he's been around forever forever so, like oh, if there God. was anything bad about that guy i feel like we would have figured it out by now oh yeah absolutely all right cool so i do want to talk to you a little bit about um, some other stuff i know we were just talking about like the whole snoop dog thing different stuff like that yeah um so this is a question that I had for you again with, you know, the whole Nova talent thing. Um, and you can use this, you know, locally or, or worldwide as well, just to make it interesting. But yeah. if you could, you know, I don't know if you call it signing or adding, mm-hmm. if you could sign one person to Nova talent right now, who would it be? Anyone? Anybody. You can pick anybody. Anyone. SZA. SZA. Who's Easily. That? SZA is, um, she has a song the weekend and all that going mm-hmm. on. Uh, I f- cannot remember the name of her album, but dude, she is just wow. And it's so funny because I remember reading something about her the other day, how uh, Jay-Z pretty much told her she wasn't going to be famous, like wasn't going to be good, mm-hmm. nothing, completely didn't sign her. Uh, she ends up getting signed, I think it's Top Dog, I think it's Kendrick's uh, label. And it's a good uh, place to be. Yeah, dude, she is killing it right now. Yeah. She is awesome. If I I would do anything to work with SZA. Oh my goodness. She's just so musically just yeah. wow, you know? You know, that's a good point that you would want to sign with her because like anybody who got told by Jay-Z that you're not going to make it and still keeps going. Still keeps going. If Jay-Z told me I wasn't going to make it like at anything, I'd be like, probably. Well, well dang. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> well, dang. Well, what do I do now? Like, you know, just. <laughs> you're right, Jay-Z. Uh-huh. Yeah, so anybody who can have Jay-Z tell them, like, yeah, you probably won't make it to keep going. And keep you're going. probably going to do it all. Dude, she is killing it What right genre now. is she? She's more like R&B, soul, uh, but she's definitely more pop, too. She's got yeah. a lot of, like, you know, like, nice songs on the radio doing her thing. Who would you pair um, compare to? 
Ooh, SZA, who would I compare? Like Erica Badu, probably. I okay. would definitely compare her to a new age Erica Badu. She is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, Erica Badu, though, she's, you know, she Erica Badu's definitely one of those people that you just can't compare to anybody, but I definitely yeah. would throw SZA in that pot for sure. Okay, how do you spell great. that? SZA. Uh, SZA is S-Z-A. Yep. It's like season? Season, sort of. Yeah, without the end. SZA you know? season? <laughs> yeah, SZA season, yeah. <laughs> Dude, if that's like not that's the super name, trendy. If that's like not the name of one of her albums, like in the next like couple of years. Season S C S season, yeah. I'll be I'll, I'll be very upset. Yeah, I'll <laughs> listen to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's no dude. She's incredible. Oh, oh those word goodness. trends, man. They kinda kill me, dude. Does that yeah, stuff right? bother you? Season? Uh it's lazy. It's like you can't just spell out season. Like, you know, just season. Yeah. Like, come on, dude. <laughs> like, season. You know, just spell it out, player. You know, it's, it's like it's not <laughs> spell it out, player. It's, it's not it's not hard. You know what I'm saying? Like season's yeah. an easy word to, to spell out, I promise, you know. Just keep shortening words. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, what can dude, you do though? <laughs> gosh, I feel like I'm getting old when I start like I start hating trends, dude. Like <laughs> when people put the words like season on a post, I almost just can't even look at it anymore. I'll tell you one of my favorite uh, new trends that came on uh, was the Black Beatles challenge, like the the one oh, where, dude. the one where they Love like it. every time the song would come on, you see the mannequin challenges was everyone, That's right. everyone and their mother would just be in the room just <laughs> <laughs> yes yes. And then finally, when the song it. dropped, they would keep moving. And, and like I remember uh, for like a couple months when Black Beatles was like really like that prominent mm -hmm. song dude as soon as that song would come on everyone and their mother would just stop what they're yep. doing including myself and we, like literally i could i could be i could be just drinking a beer doing whatever next thing you know just black beatles in straight the up. city yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> yes. yeah just everybody's frozen I, yeah. I love that i love that trend though that was that was funny yeah <laughs> there's a cool video online of the the i don't know how to say their name man to be honest with you ray it's Shrumman. drummer's ear backwards yeah i, I so, call him ray ray strumman yeah ray Shrumman, honestly don't like try Shrumman. i just always tell that same story i'm like it's drummer's ear drummer's backwards. Ear, yeah yeah mm -hmm. but um which is cool i like that i like that they're the drummer's it. ear thing but they have a video of them doing it live mm -hmm. and it's like it's like the least impressive one because they're like moving around and stuff from what i recall they probably did several yeah but i feel like that would maybe be the coolest thing ever is to do a mannequin challenge with Live. those with those guys and and yeah. they all are frozen yeah 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 i think that's super mm -hmm. cool because they made it and did they make the mannequin challenge did they come up with that or is that somebody else i think they did yeah i want to say they did yeah because okay I, the first time i ever heard of it is it's the one were you talking about the dude with the white robe on and all that and they were like maybe on stage yeah that maybe, was the first maybe. time that was they the dress really eccentric all the time though I love their I love yeah. their fashion sense. It's great. But yeah, they're um, brothers, right? They are. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Something. Yeah. I knew they're like brothers, cousins, something like that. They're family, that's for sure. I want to say they are brothers though, but yeah. they're, they're definitely family. Because they're very mm -hmm. similar looking. Yeah. And like their mm -hmm. stature and, and and whatnot. So they're probably Everything, related yeah. in some way. Um, Slim Jimmy and the. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. There's something about like families just making really good music. Like, aren't the Migos sort of related? Yeah, um, uncles or something. Takeoff and Offset are uncle and, and uh, nephew. And I think is the other guy Offset just was around them their whole life pretty much. But they yeah. they they pretty much are family. You know what I mean? Like just how yeah. they are. But like blood related, mm -hmm. Takeoff and Offset are related. So yeah. or, or no no Takeoff and uh, Quavo are related. Yeah, there's something that's cool. I mm -hmm. I, I can appreciate that. Are there any other groups like that? Um, not off the top that I can think of. I don't know that that I'd have to I'd have to come back to that. A notable sure. one would be like NWA, and I know they weren't. Really they weren't related, all related. Yeah. No, they they, related. they all just grew up together. Right. You know. Yeah, one of the, one of my favorite stories in hip hop, probably because I like movies, and they have the that awesome movie. Oh yeah, Straight Outta Compton. Oh, oh dude, I love that, that is movie. such a good the oh, opening scene where that truck pulls up and drives that like ram through the door. You know, it's funny because that's real. Like that's that's mm -hmm. really what happened back then. Um, really, uh, def around the eighties and. Uh, yeah, early '80s, '70s, '90s, um, dude. Like the crack e epidemic was just, just crazy. Mm -hmm. From there, that's where a lot of the gangs out in like Compton and Los Angeles, Watts, that was, those areas. That's where the gangs stem from because they were all, you know, trying to sell this. And then you had Joe Citizen around the block also trying to sell it. Yeah, I want more money than him, so I go up and shot him. And that's where all this stems from, pretty much. Uh, from there, you know, you end up having different gangs like Crips and Blood. You know, mm -hmm. this this block, that block, whatever. And I remember it got so bad that, uh, was it Reagan? He was the president there. I was just about to bring that up. That's yeah, the war Reagan, on drugs, right? Yeah, Reagan yeah. started the war on drugs. Or not started it, but he declared the war on drugs. And one of the things that he did, which I personally did not agree with, but, you know, he had to do what he had to do, mm -hmm. um, was, like, in the beginning of scene of NWA, they literally would take big old, like, police SWAT cars, like, almost tanks, and would put like a battering ram at the end of it going in the, the thing, the barrel. Yeah. And would just go up to houses. They, they, they had like no concrete evidence that that was like a crack den or like a drug house or whatever. They literally would be like, 
that looks like a drug house. Let's go, you know, destroy it. Oh, and they man. would. Like, a family could be in there. And half their house is destroyed in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. Imagine imagine their son or whatever is going to sleep over at his buddy's house. He comes over, finds out his mom's house is just half of it's destroyed. You yeah, know? just drove a truck. Because they, cause they think it's the a front. drug house. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And as far as I know, that you know, they did it to so many houses, you couldn't compensate all of them. So it was like, you know. It's probably some type of fear tactic. Like, yeah, we might come through your door one Scare night. Scare tactic, Which I yeah. also, I'm not a big fan of the war on drugs anyways. I think yeah. to say war on any one particular thing is a dangerous, it paints it's a yourself negative in a negative connotation, corner. yeah. Yeah, paint yourself in a corner because, you know, really the question is what is a drug? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I, I get it to a certain extent. But yeah. to a certain extent, I, I agree with you. That was a little bit but you know that's, that's a whole nother story man yeah a way Pol- over the top oh politics my gosh. Oh, yeah i love politics <laughs> everybody, everybody tune in for politics yeah pretend yeah. for politics i won't be there <laughs> I'm i won't be there <laughs> <laughs> nah, just politics man it's like i remember back in high school um before we were all 18 and we couldn't vote uh i remember uh, good I days. Had, yeah the good old days <laughs> i remember i had people in my class that would just argue left and right about when obama was going through whatever mm-hmm. and i remember i'd be that one kid in class like yeah can any of y'all vote Okay, and we would yeah. just like, and everybody would shut up quick. But now I can't even do that. Being right. twenty two years old, like we've been, been been able to vote, you know. So yeah, I, I agree with you. I remember when I was oh, I was young, probably even middle school. Was mm-hmm. it two thousand eight when Obama first went in office? Yes, I remember mm-hmm. just being like excited that he was running for president, but I no real reason why. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I couldn't vote, and I mean it was just like exciting to me to like feel like I was involved in things, but. That's a good point that, like, it is kind of hard to be involved when you're under 18, but, like... There was, like, a Democratic and a Republican club at, like, my high school. And I'm sitting what? here, like, y'all can't vote. Literally, maybe, like... <laughs> I think of, I think of the Republican cl- club, there was, like, vote. there was like three 18, 18 year olds in it. One of them wasn't even registered. Because I remember I called him out. I was like, dude, like, can y'all even vote? He goes, yeah, we have three 18-year-olds. Like, okay, how many of y'all are registered? Two of us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, wow, all right, you know? Like, yeah. that, that, that makes total sense. Argue for hours on end but y'all at the end of the day cannot vote for crap you know what i mean yeah, like, how many people are even registered in the nation is it less than half of the population yeah i remember after this past uh, elections like I, I heard of a lot of people saying they didn't vote and i'm sitting yeah. here like okay like you know like like for instance colin kaepernick i'm sure you heard about that oh yeah yeah colin yeah. you know colin starting that movement and i love that movement you know what i'm saying it's the, great yeah his whole but movement. as soon as he admitted he didn't even vote in the election i was like so oh I didn't know he man did that. come on yeah he didn't vote he didn't vote Interesting. He, he did that's all, almost as much as a protest as anything he did like. all that he didn't you mm-hmm. know he didn't support trump whatever he didn't even express who he did support but yeah we all figured he supported anybody but trump yeah. and during that time it would have been hillary because you know she got the democratic uh you know vote whatever Mm-hmm. And then he goes out and doesn't vote, and I'm sitting here like, dude, you know, like, did he talk about what his theory was behind that, or? I don't think so. I don't think I heard about it. I just, I would I love just to hear why he didn't. Why vote. he didn't vote? Because he he definitely is carrying some type of movement. You know what I mean? So I mean, people will agree with it. People will disagree with it. Yeah. But I mean, it's definitely a movement, and I I can appreciate it, man. I can appreciate a movement of of any type. Obviously, if it's like you know ridiculous and yeah. violent, like some like ridiculous. Listen, type you thing, you keep pushing at somebody, eventually they're gonna push back. That's that's always what I've been told. And Colin, he saw the, you know, oppression and whatever was going on in his world and and everybody else's world. Yeah. And he just decided like, yo, enough's enough. You know what I mean? So yeah. he did he did what he did, and you know, yeah, he got a lot of backlash because you know you don't sit during the anthem, this and that, all yeah. that. Like you know, I get that. But like you know, you just gotta you just gotta think like, and, and that's another thing that I think like uh, people in general, not just Americans, just people, can genuinely take out of that. It's like you know, when he's doing what he's doing, he's not saying, "Oh yeah, bump America," you know, like I hate this country, I want to yeah. move out. That is not what he's saying at right. all. Right. What he's saying is that he's tired of those bad apples that are in the bunch, you mm-hmm. know, because you know anybody can you can have a good group of people and then have that one person that just screws it up for everybody. Now, imagine that is going into the police force and the NFL, just whatever's going on. So, obviously, Colin, you know, he had a movement going on, but he wasn't saying he hated America. And that's what a lot of people think. And it gets on my nerves because I'm sitting there like, yo, y'all do not understand that Mm -hmm. he's aiming it directly towards one party. There isn't anyone that he's like, he's not he's not saying I hate all of you. That is not what he's saying at all. He's saying that, you know, there's a particular group of negative people that he doesn't agree with. That's yeah. what he's saying, you know? You want to know what it is? What Why people have a, an issue with that? Yeah. It's because the people who have an issue with that, which, you know, I'm going to be, I'm just going to try to explain this the best way I can. Yeah. Like, I don't, I'm not like against what he did. I love football and I was a 
Colin Kaepernick fan when he went to the Super Bowl. That guy was exciting, dude. Oh, yeah, dude. his bicep when he was scoring touchdowns. Oh, that, yeah, like, that, that, I, was, I, that, was the, that was the greatest thing. Like, dude, I love the attitude. That. I love the attitude. I thought it was exciting. And, mm -hmm. and, and uh, what it comes down to is, like, you know, he made a stand. He was on a platform. One of the biggest complaints about it was, like, oh, like, you're living in the system. You're making all this money. Like, you you know, you're you're living like a superstar. And, you know, why do you have a problem with this? And, like, it's not that he is necessarily experiencing the problem, which he probably is to a certain extent. But, like, he's taking his platform and saying, like, you know, I'm speaking for everybody who doesn't also have this platform. And I can appreciate that. But to me, what it comes down to is the reason that – uh, people have an issue with this is because they're choosing to believe what makes them mad yeah. because they don't want to accept it. But like, yeah. if you, if anybody who has a problem with it spends five minutes, ten minutes looking at the things he's literally said, the things he's literally for, like you can't be mad about you it. You cannot be he, mad. He, at him. He's he's favoring justice. That dude, he doesn't. He's not against the military. Different things like that. Like he's against good things and like. People are upset about it because they they heard something on the news and they heard, oh this is what Colin Kaepernick did they don't these but people you know are mad, what? aren't taking time to read about it yeah but you know what the news is doing exactly what they're paid to do to take it and make it a bigger issue than it is like that that's just honestly that's that's just what people in the news and you know no knock to them but that's yeah. exactly what they're trying to do they're trying to make it a bigger deal than it is because that's what's gonna put us out there to read it you know what i'm saying people are louder when they're mad exactly yep so exactly. you get them riled up they're talking about your story oh guess what i heard on cnn earlier yeah exactly they said your name exactly you know and what I'm i mean like, so yeah in my in my opinion with, with this whole movement i love the movement um you know because it just it just speaks on just different stuff that's just been going on in the world yeah. like like forget football i'm talking about you know just just oppression you know what i mean just whatever's going on and it's funny because you know i have this thought in my head but i've never personally had a bad experience with a cop Never, yeah. never. And, you know, and, and it's and it's funny because I don't even think it was a racial thing. Yeah, it can be twisted into that because, you know, you know, the demographics are, are what they are. Mm -hmm. But it's more or less as like a, there are some bad apple police officers there. You know what I'm saying? Like you've got police officers who are genuinely out there to do their job. And I've met a ton of them. Every single cop I've ever encountered in Murfreesboro and in Atlanta have never given me flack. Never. Never. Not even if they're writing me a ticket. I'm like, dude, you, you're doing your job. I was speeding. Sorry. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But every cop that I've ever, like, experienced, like, you know, these are people that, like, they have families of their own. You know, they're mm -hmm. doing their job. They're out here. Like, be real. If someone were to burst in right now and threatened all of us, who's the first person I'm going to call? The cops. police. Exactly. Yeah. So why would I We're sit gonna here? We're going to be glad we can talk yeah, to them. Yeah, exactly. You know? So why would I sit here and be mad at a cop doing his job, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and it's a two-way street. You've got people out here who, you know disagree with what Colin says and hate the movement and they think that he's out of his league they should shut up and play football you know mm -hmm. whatever but then you also have people on that side of the movement that want to sit here and bash every single person with a uniform on you know what I mean there are some great cops that, my uncle's a cop you know what I'm saying like my yeah. uncle is a police officer out in Florida and you know he doesn't he does an amazing job you know he's he's you know respectful he executes his priorities you know of the law he's doing his thing You've got police out here that are also loose cannons. And whether mm -hmm. whether or not, you know, those reports of, like, in the past of, you know, like, of L.A. police officers, I'm sure everybody heard about it. Um, uh, what's his name? Daryl Gates or something like that? He he was not the sure. main police chief during all that BS that was going on in L.A. Okay. with the Rodney King beating and all that going on. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe he was a bad apple. He just happened to be in the highest, you know, spot. And he brought certain people in to execute what he wanted his police force to be. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean I hate the LAPD at all. Do I hate that guy? Probably. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, he's been gone. You know what I'm saying? And they vow mm -hmm. to clean it up, whatever. Let them do their thing. Let them clean it up and honor what's going on with this movement. Like, if people just ever, like, and this, you know, screw the movement, screw everything that's going on. If people just sat down and listened to other people, mm -hmm. then we would be not, we wouldn't be in so many different issues that we're in now. It's like people just want to hear. It's it's like it's like texting your angry girlfriend and you explain something, and she only sees like one bit of it, and then she goes picks that sentence out. Yep. And that's the subject line yes. of the re rebuttal back. You know what I'm saying? It's like there. it's like ladies, if you if you take a moment to read everything your man's saying, then you wouldn't be arguing as much. You feel me? Like yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like I mean, let's, let's be yeah. real. Like I'm yeah. saying, and, and vice versa, and vice versa. And vice versa. Yeah. You know, there, versa. there's some guys that are pretty stupid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but no, but, but but on the real, if. People just sat down and they just had the opportunity to just sit down and just listen to people. Yes. You know, if you heard everything I had to say, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, my name's Rasan. I'm this and that. 
I don't agree with what you've got going on, but this is why. Mm -hmm. It's like people just hear me say, I don't agree with what you got going on, and then they decide to go off on yep. me about they're it. They're not even listening like, to you after that point. They're thinking about how they're going to rebuttal they're gonna to what you just back, said. Like, yeah, what they're going to say to you. And, and I mean, no, that's a big issue, and I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up because, like, I mean, me and you, like, we're young, 22, yeah. 22. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, we're the next generation, and, and more people need to think like this for when, you know, it comes time to all these different things. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I just feel like it's it's good that, like, we're having this conversation right here because, like you said, like, we're talking. We agree on a lot of things, exactly. fortunately. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. But I feel like if we were disagreeing on something, we'd have the opportunity to— We have to, the respect to yeah. listen to each other. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. if, if you told me—if I said the sky was blue and you were like, no, the sky's red, I could sit here and be like, mm -hmm. okay, explain to me why the sky is red. And, yeah, we could disagree, but I at least have more respect for you mm -hmm. as a man and as my friend that, you know— Maybe he genuinely has a reason why the sky is red. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when the sunset goes down a little too early, it does look red. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yes. whatever. Like, it's, yeah. it's got this orange, yeah. hazel, whatever going on. So, and, I'm like, and, and yeah. <laughs> as individuals, like, we also have to be prepared to, like, to be wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, if I'm if we're having that conversation and I think the sky is red, like, I need to be 100% ready to be completely wrong. Exactly. I'm talking to you and, you and for you to be right. Because, like, something that's super important about having, like, conversations like this is that when you have an idea and when you, you were talking about something – yeah. You're presenting that idea. Mm -hmm. That idea is not always you. Because yep. sometimes you're on the fly. You're inventing things. Things are coming out of your head. You have to be prepared to put an idea on the table and not just protect it like it's always fact. And yeah. to be prepared to you know alter that and different things like that. Like you can't take everything personally. Exactly. So like I mean you got to converse about those things. Yeah. No. I mean that's just how I feel about like opinions and stuff like that. Like you have to be prepared yeah. to give up your opinion, protect it if it's truly worth protecting, but always be you know vulnerable to yourself to to go over. What's funny is people don't understand there's more than one right answer to a situation you know what i mean yes. like that that's also true like you know we both could be right but my right isn't better than yours or vice versa like yeah we're both right that's okay and if i am wrong okay cool you know that that's that's all right i learned something new you know just people just out here just blow my mind sometimes you know <laughs> i like just you know you just got people out here that just literally are so wrapped up in their own worlds that it's just like Wow. You know what I mean? Like, how yeah. have you made it this far? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's just... But, I mean, uh, you, you can only do so much. But but that makes me happy that, you know, me being, you know, head of Nova and you starting this, this awesome podcast, by the way. Appreciate it. Um, you know, more people need to be the heads of certain things like this that have that mindset. Because the more that we can just keep having, you know, individualistic people like that that are running this stuff, then maybe, just maybe, we can be able to, you know, just figure out what the heck's going on out here you know like i mean this is what this podcast is about that's what the theme of this podcast is is we're bringing you know interesting people on yeah. and we're getting to know people and people can listen to this and you know yeah. even even in our area right here there's a lot of people to get to know and i want to branch out from there mm -hmm. and i want people to hear stories like yours and mine yeah. and, and and you know learn through this because you know we are the next generation we're going to be the next you know group who runs this country and I love this country. I love it too, man. I love the world, man. America's awesome, dude. Yeah, like, America's awesome, man. Everybody that always says like, oh, you know, I'd, I'd rather move out, blah, blah, blah. Like, I love it here. What do you mean? Like, you yeah. know? I haven't been to another country, so I guess I couldn't tell you not to move oh, there. Oh, I travel all the time, man. Yeah. I'll tell you. this America's where it's at. Yeah. You know, like. All I know crazy. is I'm here, and it's great. So, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I know I enjoy where I'm here. Well, Rasan, it looks like we're almost to the end of our beers yeah. here. Let's <laughs> go ahead and finish these off. At, absolutely. Yeah. Let's do it. Well, man, before we exit the show here, I want to thank everybody for tuning in and listening. Uh, please subscribe to our podcast. Share it. If you think what we're saying is interesting, please drop in the comments if you want to hear a certain guest, a certain topic. I'd love to hear about that. Uh, Rasan, do you have any shout-outs, anything you'd like to mention while you're on the show? Um, first of all, hi, Mom. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I love you. Mom. See you later. Hi, Mom. Uh, <laughs> but no, first of all, just got to say, it's just a blessing being out here. You know, I got to give a... All glory to God always, you know, um, everything that I do. Um, but definitely shout out to my Nova crew. You know, love you guys. Uh, you know, we're working out here. Um, shout out to the ones that are performing um, on the next Monday showcase uh, tonight. Actually, that's going to be, you know, Austin Sawyer, Nick Vanderwalker, Chloe Kimes and friends. You know, they're doing their thing. Um, shout out to those guys, you know, uh, for believing in me and trusting me in this process. Uh, cannot tell you how blessed these uh, last couple of months have been. Um, but yeah, just love you guys always and just happy to be here, man. This is awesome. This is real good. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, please follow this guy on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. This guy has great content. Uh, again, Nova Talent. Check out everything this guy is doing, uh, doing great stuff in the in the community. Uh, be looking out for this guy in the future and present. And um, one last question before you leave. What's up? If you had to listen to one song and only one song for the rest of your life, what song would that be? 
Ooh, Child's Play by Drake. Love Child's, play, Child's by play by Drake. Drake. Shout out to Drake. <laughs> you got the last song of Rasan's life. Thanks for listening, guys. See y'all. Yeah. All right, dude. Good job. If you like what you hear, don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow us on Instagram at Cheers Podcast. Be sure to comment what you'd like to hear from us in future episodes. Thanks for listening.